From limo rides to movie rentals, the way candidates spend campaign money may surprise you. He's spending his money on limos instead of voter outreach. That's actually to my benefit as a candidate. He's wasting his money as far as I'm concerned. We asked candidates in one congressional race about how they're spending donations and why federal rules are not being enforced right now. A packed Senate primary brings out ideas you don't usually hear in mainstream politics. I'm running to end the systemic poverty, systemic racism, and the ecological devastation that is brought on by policy violence, the 40 years of neoliberal policy violence. Why one candidate says Democrats need a new approach to win in November. Hello and thank you for joining us for State of Texas. I'm Phil Prazen. Dozens of candidates will be asking you for money next year. Politicians of many stripes will send you texts, emails, and flyers asking you to donate to their campaigns to get elected. Campaign funds used to be more narrowly for running for re-election, but over the years, what is allowed expanded to other political activity, legal work, travel, meals, and special events. I've spent the past few weeks looking at the candidates in Congressional District 10 and what they spent their money on so far. That includes the Republican incumbent and the three Democratic challengers. I reached out for interviews to all of them because I had some questions. First up, the campaign expenses of Austin Republican Congressman Michael McCall. Federal Election Commission documents show 19 charges to high-end car service and limo company Echelon Transportation. Those 19 trips cost more than $5,700. That was just in the first three quarters of 2019. McCall's campaign has spent nearly $30,000 on the service before this year. I reached out to his campaign and a spokesman told me over the phone the congressman uses the service when he travels too early or too late for staff to take him. Many times, it's to the airport. The campaign spokesman says he uses campaign dollars so he doesn't use taxpayer dollars. Congress members get allowances to travel. As someone who's running to replace Michael McCall, if he's spending his money on limos instead of voter outreach, that's actually to my benefit as a candidate. He's wasting his money as far as I'm concerned. But I also had some questions for Democratic candidate Mike Siegel. If donors were giving his campaign money, why did his campaign then give $300 to the Texas Democratic Party and almost $1,900 to the Travis County Democratic Party? Last cycle, the Travis County Party uh, knocked on thousands upon thousands of doors. And so it's just important that we chip in, even if it's only a symbolic amount, to show that we're part of this collective movement. It's important to know that is a common practice. Congressman McCall gave some of his campaign donations to Texas Right to Life, the Travis County Republican Party, the Bastrop and Greater Tomball Chambers of Commerce, and many more organizations. When I asked why, the campaign issued a statement saying the congressman is proud to support pro-life, women's groups, and local chambers because he understands the importance of these organizations when running a grassroots campaign. As for other candidates, FEC documents for the campaign of Democrat Dr. Pratesh Gandhi show a $4 charge to Amazon for video rental. His campaign manager told me that was an accident and his campaign was repaid. And it's unlikely any of these examples would get a candidate in trouble with the FEC. It's hard to draw a line. And because unless you have a lot more detail sometimes, you don't know what's underlying that expenditure. Longtime ethics and campaign finance expert Buck Wood tells me the Federal Election Commission often enforces the rules based on complaints. So violations will have to be much larger to get their attention. The FEC works almost entirely off of whistleblowers. He adds it's mostly up to donors themselves to make sure they approve of what candidates spend their money on. For more perspective, you'll see these charges on the FEC report. Hundreds of dollars for flowers and Zach Theater tickets spent by Shannon Hutchison, another Democratic candidate. Then fees for an every town for gun safety event for Dr. Pratesh Gandhi. These and many other things are labeled as in-kind donations. That means Gandhi and Hutchison spent money out of their own pocket, but because they are a candidate for office, they report it as an in-kind donation for full transparency. We've posted the campaign donation and spending reports on this story online. You can find it in the Texas Politics section of your station's website. On those reports, you will see Republican Michael McCall has spent the most because he's raised the most. He's spent $452,000. He's raised $1.2 million. Dr. Gandhi has raised $528,000 and spent nearly $210,000.
Shannon Hutchison raised $534,000 and spent $151,000. Mike Siegel raised $355,000 and spent $207,000. The Federal Election Commission is in charge of enforcing campaign finance laws, but right now that agency cannot do that job very well. There's a dispute over President Trump's FEC nominee, so right now there are only three members on the commission. Federal law requires a quorum of four to make any enforcement decisions. The future of Obamacare is back in the hands of a Texas court. How a legal decision could change the way millions of Americans get health insurance. A key endorsement lifts up MJ Hager in the packed Democratic Senate primary, but it could also bring a backlash. It doesn't bring me any joy because I did not run for Congress to impeach any president. He was one of the last members of Congress to make his decision on impeachment, how political pressure played a role in his and other Texans' votes.